So about the company, the company is 10 years old. We have around 800 employees uh, worldwide. We have around 80 here in San Francisco. Um, we are kind of pioneer in this industry. We have been the first company who have done the free-to-play games, gaming space uh, in, in the European world. Um, so far, we have the largest browser game portfolio, the largest, um, we have the largest free-to-play company in, in Europe. Uh, we have one of the most active user bases in, in, in Europe. So other people, you know, here in the US, they call us the Zynga of, of, of Europe, even that we are not on Facebook. And that's exactly what I've learned here in, in the US. And that's why I'm going back to, to, to Europe to build an even stronger internet, um, uh, gaming business there. If you talk about online gaming, you're talking about the opportunity in this market, you have to know that almost 50% of entire internet traffic is gaming. That includes, by the way, also gambling um, um, here, the 46%. And that shows you how big this market is and how many people play uh, in the internet. And if you talk about the general market um, and uh, why I'm here and I'm talking to you is because the opportunity for us in the U.S. is huge. Um, so far, the games uh, you see in the U.S. market are either Facebook games, mobile games, or console games. Meaning the browser gaming space uh, is not really existing in the U.S. at the moment, and that's a huge opportunity for companies like, like us. We're generating at the moment around less than 10%, 8-9% of our revenues are just U.S. revenue. So we are mainly still a European company, um, even that we're developing games, even that we have huge IPs like Ice Age, Game of Thrones, um, Battlestar Galactica, and so on in our portfolio. Um, but, but the main reason why we haven't cracked the U.S. market is because we have developed games just in the European market and for Europeans. And that's exactly what we are now going to change, and that's the reason why we are here, and that's the reason why I'm talking to you guys, because we are looking for companies we can acquire, maybe portfolio companies of you, companies we can merge with, companies we can create joint ventures, etc., to crack the U.S. market in terms of browser gaming. So the, the important thing, if we are now here in the U.S., what we really would like to achieve is we would like to be a local company. We would like to think about the local our audience. What kind of games do you have to provide in the U.S. market uh, to make it successful? And you don't have to forget Facebook. If you do something in the U.S., you have to be on Facebook. You have to do things there. Uh, and so far, there are not many European companies who have been successful on Facebook. For that reason, we are here in San Francisco to hire the right talents, to develop the right games for this platform. And at the end, we have, we have to make our games, games famous. And one of the things, what I just said, games like Ice Age, Game of Thrones, Battlestar Galactica, this is the way how we think we can crack this market by entering the market, using well-known IPs, developing high-quality games um, with our business model and playing the browser. And I want to show you a short video to see what kind of quality games we are um, capable to develop. We are not talking about the normal social games you are maybe used to from, from Facebook. Uh, we can develop much higher quality of, of games. You see some of the games that being in footage, you see like this hard uh, you see the quality uh, of the uh, yeah. Panorama is more successful than Panorama in Europe. There are more than Panorama than Panorama in Europe. And you can see that there are different kinds of games. There are sport games, and all of them are really high quality. Games normally it takes us between 6 and 24 months to develop one of the games, talking about development costs from $200,000 up to $5 million at the moment. That's around the production value we are talking here for browser-based games. The business model at the end we have started 10 years ago uh, in, in Europe um, is a free-to-play um, um, business model. And I want to just briefly explain you, I think maybe most of you know what a free-to-play model is, but I want to explain you on a very simple chart why this model is so successful. Because if this model, the subscription model, the, the old model in, in the gaming industry, you only can monetize those users who are willing to pay exactly the price point you're asking for. So if you charge a user five or 10 bucks a month, they're only paying exactly this, this, this amount. But with a free-to-play model, you can charge every amount you want, and you can monetize every user on every price. So we have users who just spend maybe 10 cents, 10, 20 cents, or something like that per month. But we also have users in our portfolio who spend hundreds, even 10 thousands uh, in our, our games. And this is really the interesting market here. We're talking about users who generate um, 
or to spend um, an average more than 150 euros every month in our games, and they're generating over 80% of our revenues. They wouldn't, wouldn't be able to spend that amount if you just ask them for five or ten dollars monthly. And that's again the reason why free to play is so interesting, and the reason why our company is generating already uh, a couple hundred million um, dollars um, uh, yearly revenue. Talking about Farmarama, I just mentioned that this game is generating more uh, revenue in, in Europe than Farmville from Zynger. Um, this game is around two and a half years old now. Um, and 40% of all our users stay longer than 12 months in this, in this game. So meaning this is not a short-term game for them. They're very loyal to, to, our, to our games. Uh, we, we can monetize them for a very long time. And the even more interesting part is, if you see this is a level curve, you see what we, what we spend in the first level, it's almost nothing. And at the end, uh, the longer the user stay in the game, the more he spends um, in, in, in our games. And that's a really interesting part. That's the reason why we have to take care about life cycle management, retention, CRM, and all those kind of things. The potential of the user is huge if you are able to manage them very well. And that's what we show with 40% that we are able to do that. Talking about our financials, we were growing very, very heavily in the last years, but now with now already three-digit revenue numbers, we cannot double our revenues anymore from year to year, but we still have a very strong growth of around 50% last year, and we also will have a strong growth uh, in, in this year. But the outlook, what are we doing? What are we do doing at the moment and planning to do? Um, as you said, um, we have now an office in San Francisco for around one and a half years, two years, with around 80 employees, um, having also other offices in Sao Paulo, other European countries, and we're going even further with that. because we want to build the biggest distribution network for, for gaming, for online gaming. So what we do is we have around 280 million registered users in our, in our database, in our games. We get in contact with our games through our distribution partners of 800 million um, million eyeballs every month. We have more than 30,000 affiliate partners who integrated our games on their websites, and we have a 1,000 media partners. And mainly in Europe, what we do special and totally different than what we do here in, in, in the US or what the US market is about is TV promotion, TV advertising. We promote our games heavily on, on air, and we don't spend any guarantees fee fees for that. So the most TV partners we have, we just pay them a revenue share um, on the success of, of our games. And that works um, for some of the TV channels even better than just selling the ad inventory because they generate a lifetime revenue share and generating millions um, with, our, with our games. And that makes it for them very profitable and for us very easy to generate traffic. And that's exactly what we want to build in all the other countries uh, we are now entering uh, in, in, in this year. All the offices you see in Europe, we just started uh, to open beginning of this year. Uh, we plan to open even more in Moscow and Istanbul this, this, this year um, to create an even stronger network. Thank you very much.